Wildcats. So um, we've been doing stop, drop, and HSA. Now we're going on to biology because we're on fire. So uh, one thing that I want you to remember is that Wildcats roar. They don't meow. So when you get into that HSA mode, I really want you to be roaring and not meowing. Don't be scared of it. All right, let's get started with some bio. We're going to start first with some simple experimenting techniques and what you need to know about the scientific method. Basically, there are four main steps you got to know. First, there's your scientific question. So in life, you might wonder about why something happens the way that it does, so you're going to pose a question. All right, you want to be able to answer that question somehow. So then the next thing you do is you guess an answer. And your educated guess is going to be your hypothesis. We'll go over that. And then you actually test it out and you see what is the answer to my scientific question. Finally, you get some data, which means you get some numbers or you get some observations and you see what is your conclusion. Were you right or were you wrong? All right, next slide. For your scientific question, your scientific question gives you a reason for doing the experiment. It tells you why you're doing it and it really gives you a goal. Um, the most important thing you got to remember is your scientific question has to be answered with an experiment. Okay, so the whole idea here is you're making this question so that you can answer it by doing an experiment. All right, let's go next. So we're going to look at this example here. I'll read the example and we'll see how this um, can be um, into, turned into an experiment. So Hudson's find her, we might know beautiful Jennifer, Jennifer Hudson here from American Idol. Here's her dilemma. Jennifer Hudson's hairstylist says that there is no product sold that can make hair longer and healthier than natural fruit juices, especially mango juice. She wants to look her finest for the Oscars. The Oscars already came and went, but she still wants to look good for the next ones, let's say, and wants to know what will make her hair really long. Her scientific question from reading this is then she's probably wondering like, What's going to make my hair, you know, longer, better, healthier? And so her scientific question here is, which natural fruit juice makes hair grow the fastest? That's what she wants to know. She wants to look good for those Oscars. So that's her scientific question. Let's go to the next part. If you remember, the second part to your scientific method, to your experiment, is giving a hypothesis. So here's your educated guess. So let's see what Jennifer Hudson's educated guess is to her scientific question, how she answered it. So this is the same scenario, I'm not going to go through it again. Her hypothesis here is, she says, you know, since my hairstylist is experienced, kind of knows what he's doing, I think mango juice will make my hair grow the fastest, I'll believe him. So that's her educated guess. It's educated because she's saying, you know, I think he's experienced, he knows what he's talking about. So there's a good educated guess, it's not a random guess. So I got my guess, now I want to test it out. I want to see, is my test right or is it wrong? So. I'm going to do this, I'm going to answer my question and see if I'm right or wrong by doing this experiment. And in order to experiment, you've got to have three main things. The first thing you've got to have is something called, and I'm sure you've heard of it before, an independent variable. Never, ever, ever will you have more than one independent variable. You will never change more than one thing at a time. I like to think of this independent variable as my cause, okay, and I'll tell you why. Because this independent variable is what the scientist changes. What is the change that the scientist is making? That's what you got to ask yourself when you're answering, what is my independent variable here? The second thing is the dependent variable. Okay? And I like to think of this as my effect. So think of it this way. You have a cause and then you have an effect. So your dependent variable is the result of the change that I made as a scientist. This is why we call it dependent, because it depends on what I did. Did I change it and did that cause something to happen, right? My cause makes an effect happen. And so that's how you can think of your independent variable and then your dependent. You're going to see some clarity on this. You're going to really figure it out when we talk about Hudson's experiment. The last thing you've got to remember is you need a control, okay? You need to be able to prove that you have good results and that your results mean something. And in order to do that, you have to have a control. And that means a control is a sample that did not get changed by the scientist. And I'll explain that a little better on the next slide when you see the example. So remember, control, you're controlling it. You're not changing it, okay? You need this in order to compare and prove. So if we look at Hudson's find her, right? Your scientific question was, which natural fruit juice makes hair grow the fastest? Well, we can answer this by doing this. Okay, you want to know which one makes hair grow the fastest. So in month one, 
Hudson is going to, let's say, use her usual VO5 shampoo, okay? And then what she's going to do is measure. She's going to measure her hair after she's done that for a month and see, you know, did, v did VO5 make my hair grow longer? In month two, she's going to use that mango juice that her hairstylist recommended and she's going to measure again, okay? So she'll cut her hair before month one and month two so she can start at the same length and then see, did my hair grow longer with mango? She'll, her, she'll cut her hair before month three and she'll start again with tomato juice this time to see, you know, does tomato juice um, work better? Okay, and she's going to measure again her hair and see how that works. Okay, so she's got those three things she tested. So if we think about it, remember, our independent variable was the, uh, the change that the scientist made. Okay? So that was my cause. What did I cause? What did I do? What am I changing here? If you see, I'm changing the product in the hair. VO5 here, mango here, and tomato there. So I changed those things. That's the thing that I changed as a scientist. Now the question here is, what's my dependent variable? So what is the result or what is the effect of the change that I made? The result here or the effect is what am I measuring? What, what is, what's going on? You know, is there a change happening to my hair? So the hair length is the thing that's getting, getting affected by what I did. So here's your effect, here's your cause. Okay, the dependent depends on your independent. All right, my hair length depends on what I put in my hair. Okay, my control, if you remember, I controlled it. I didn't change this sample. And what I mean by that is in month one, the test that I did in month one, I didn't change that. She usually uses VO5, so I didn't change that. The only changes I made was when I used mango juice and tomato, because she usually doesn't do that. So when you don't change it, when there's no change being made, that set right there is gonna be called your control. So this guy right here, my month number one, where I used VO5, I consider that my control. Okay.